God bless you, everyone. My name is Minister Dave, talking to you from the Resurrection Center. Uh, this is the Bravehearted Men's Ministry. Tonight, we're going to talk about fight for your family. And so let's begin. Uh, men who stop going to church and use the language like, I've got a lot going on, those are the ones who have, in one way or another, given up on their family to some degree. Men slipping away from their family are the ones who have fallen into the traps of deceptive thinking and are manipulated away from responsibility and accountability. When men have no sense of accountability, then their stewardship over their family falls into chaos. They can no longer hold their rightful position as leaders of their household since they have lost control of ownership and of their rightful position. Men need not explain themselves to anyone. Men need to let go of thinking people need to know their side of the story. There are two sides and the truth is in the middle. Men's focus on their side of the story is antagonistic and confrontational. What matters more than one side of the story or the other side of the story is the family. What sits in the middle of both sides of the story is what matters, and that is the family. And that is true with or with no children. The agenda of conversation for men fighting their family is, and there are four things we'll talk about. Uh, the first one is five reasons for family conflict. The next one is five ways to stop a family fight. The next one is ten ways to keep family together. And then finally, 10 ways to help your family be closer to God. Those are the four things we'll talk about. Here are the five reasons for family conflict. Number one, antagonistic behavior and constant criticism. It's a behavior, and this is a behavior that you know will have pushback from the other side. So what's the answer? Don't do that. It doesn't produce any results. Uh, number two, that's the same thing as fighting with confrontation and attacks. That means using the weapons of voice uh, and being deflective. Uh, number three, blaming the other side to deflect the true blame. There are two sides to every story and the truth is in the middle. And number four, pushing buttons of emotions. You know, that's an intentional attack. Um, both sides can be able to push buttons of emotions. No reason to be firing missiles towards each other. And number five, defensive behavior and no accountability. That's uh, just pushing the responsibility off of uh, one side, and that doesn't work. Here are five ways to stop a family fight. Sometimes you just need a timeout or a ceasefire. Just take a break. Just stop, because you can't shift immediately out of a, a fight, just a timeout. Um, and number two, uh, understand there's a difference between feeling versus blaming, meaning uh, sharing a feeling versus confrontation. Confrontation is blaming, okay? So just understand the difference. Number three, pencil paper, writing it out. Number one, you can do that during your timeout. Number two, you can use an I feel language. Understand how you feel and understand uh, how other people feel, which brings us to number four. Understand two sides exist and the truth is in the middle. Okay? And, and number five, will it matter five years from now? Whatever you're fighting about, will it matter five years from now? Uh, let's talk about the next item, ten ways to keep your family together. Number one. Use kindness when discussing a conflict of interest. When you're doing that, what you're doing is you're discussing in a responsible way something that may not be in good terms with yourself or perhaps the other. Uh, number two, be gentle with your spouse. Behavior goes a long way because that's how they'll perceive you. Number three, be aware of your own feelings as well as others, okay? Your feelings aren't just one side that you need to focus on. You need to focus on other feelings as too. Uh, number four, know when to take a break. 
You need to throttle back uh, when you're doing too much. Maybe you're working too much, causing anxiety. Maybe something is happening in the relationship that's causing anxiety. Just know when to take a break. Reduce the pressure. Number five, scan for the positives. Avoid the negatives. If you focus on the negatives, then the negatives will take control of your mind. Focus on the positives. Number six, listen with empathy. What that means is be in the other person's shoes. Your, your side is not the only side. Number seven, stay away from criticism. That means receiving it, but also uh, giving it. Uh, that's another way of emptying the negative thoughts. Stay away from criticism. Uh, because giving criticism uh, has no effect. Number eight, sometimes you just need to give each other space. Everyone needs time. Uh, time has a way of healing. And number nine, practice self-care. Be appealing to your family. Um, number 10, talk issues openly, but more importantly, constructively to air out the conflicts. But again, this has to be a constructive conversation, not an argument. There's a difference. And next, uh, 10 ways to help your family be closer to God. Let's talk about that. 10 ways to help your family be closer to God. Number one, read God's words uh, together. Understand that God is in the center of a marriage, so read God's word together, or even with the children um, as a single family unit. Number two, serve others together, helping out as a family. Um, a good example is my wife and I, we volunteer at the church together. Uh, number three, express love for each other very often. Show the appreciation, show the adoration. Uh, number four, pray together as a family. Uh, I'll give uh, myself as an example. My wife and I, when we wake up in the morning, at, usually at five o'clock in the morning, we pray together for a short time before I start work. Um, the way we end the day is we pray together as well. Uh, number five, spend meal time together. Meal time is an important time of bonding. There's something about meal time having dinner together or breakfast together, or maybe it's a Saturday brunch, whatever it is. Um, you may not be able to do it every day because of the busy work schedules and life schedules, but spend some meal time together. Um, a good example is my wife and I also, Sunday after church, we go to a restaurant together. So that's another uh, time that we spend meal time together. Number six, teach good values. These are the biblical principles. That means talk about what you've learned in the Bible and talk to each other about it. You can teach, but you can also learn. Number seven, this is very common. I, it should perhaps be number one. Go to church together uh, because that way you're doing something together as a family unit. Which brings us to number eight, start traditions together, the special times. One tradition could be going to church together, okay? Other things can be, um, I, I, the example I gave before, my wife and I, it's a tradition for us to go to dinner after church. This is something we've been doing for years and years and years. Uh, number nine, learn about your ancestors. Know your history. What do I mean by that? There's a lot of good value that I learned from my mother and father. And as an adult, I continue to learn what they taught me years ago. Uh, they passed away years ago, but I still reflect on what they tried to teach me, and I learn from it. You know, we as parents or guardians or leaders of a family, we try to teach our children good values. Um, and... Well, before you, your parents or aunt and uncles, they try to teach you good values. So remember what you were taught so that you can teach others. That's what I mean by learn about your ancestors and know your history. And number 10, hold a weekly family night. Uh, could be going to the restaurant. The, one I, the example I've used before, it could be bowling. Uh, maybe you may not be able to do it weekly. Maybe it could be monthly. Uh, but something for the family to look forward to, meaning it is your special time together. Those, so those are 10 ways to help your family be closer to God. 
We talked today about the following, four different things. We talked about, number one, five reasons for family conflict. Number two, five ways to stop a family fight. Uh, number three, ten ways to keep your family together. And finally, ten ways to help your family be closer to God. And that's all I have now for the Bravehearted Men's Ministry at the Resurrection Center. My name is Minister Dave.